I've said it before, Nitrox is for every diver, and I still stand by that. But let's say you've made a reservation at a dive center and you show up on the day to do your diving and the person who's checking you in asks you, hey, do you wanna dive air or Nitrox today? How do you choose? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. We're back once again with the next in our series of Mouthpiece Mondays. If you're new to our channel, make your next dive on our subscribe button. Click that little bell icon because we make videos with one very simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you a better scuba diver. Like today, where we're kind of doing a follow-up to our very popular Nitrox is for every diver video. If you haven't seen that one, link's up there, check it out. And we're asking the question, okay, well, if Nitrox is for every diver, and I definitely still believe that every open water scuba diver should be Nitrox certified because they're gonna have an understanding of dive physiology, a much better understanding than is provided with normal open water training. What happens when you're asked to choose between air and Nitrox? How should you make the decision? What should the factors be that you're looking at? Or to put it another way, if diving Nitrox is an upcharge, and it usually is, when should you invest in Nitrox over air? So in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the deciding factors for when I choose to dive Nitrox versus when I would choose to dive air. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna be giving you my gas selection criteria for even deeper dives. Let's get into it. Let's start by looking at when I would choose to use Nitrox. Firstly then, any time my dive is being cut short because I'm hitting my air, no decompression limit, the amount of time I can stay at that depth on air, as opposed to my gas consumption, I wanna be diving nitrox. If you're down there breathing like an asthmatic orangutan, nitrox isn't gonna extend your dive time because you'll use nitrox as fast as you use air. But if you're good on your gas consumption and you find that you're ending your dives because you're hitting your no decompression limit but you still have a ton of gas left, then nitrox is definitely a better breathing medium for you. The second situation in which I would insist upon nitrox is just if I'm doing a ton of diving. If I'm doing multiple dives a day for multiple days in a row, I'm gonna wanna be on nitrox because it's gonna do me a couple of clear favors. It's gonna keep my surface interval between dives as short as possible and allow me to get in back into the water sooner. And because I'm gonna be surfacing with less residual nitrogen, my subsequent dives are gonna be allowed to be longer as well. So I'm gonna be able to maximize my dive time on repetitive dives. Thirdly, anytime you want an extra safety margin, without exception, less nitrogen is always better than more nitrogen. Every open water and above level certified diver agrees that scuba diving is an inherently dangerous sport and that even if you follow best practices, all of your training and nothing goes wrong and you follow the dive plan, there is still the smallest chance that you could get decompression sickness. It's what we call an undeserved hit. Less nitrogen reduces that chance. Therefore, diving nitrox for the same profile gives you less a chance of an undeserved hit than diving air. Okay, so in defense of air then, I'll start by saying I nearly always dive nitrox, all right? I'm normally teaching back-to-back -back courses, so for one of the three reasons I just mentioned, nitrox is the gas that I choose. On what occasions would I choose air, hypothetically speaking? Number one, if nitrox just isn't available. Yeah, it's 2021, but still nitrox isn't available everywhere. Some of the Caribbean islands you might have seven or eight dive shops and only one or two of them will actually offer nitrox. Nitrox requires a lot of technology. You either need to have pure oxygen and the specialist equipment required to handle that or a dedicated compressor with really expensive nitrox filtration system. It's not easy and in some of the more remote places in the world nitrox still just isn't available. So if it's a choice between diving air or not diving I'm always gonna choose diving air. Secondly, if I'm just doing a couple of shallow reef dives and my NDL isn't going to be affected. So for example, if I go out and do a 30 foot reef dive down in Key Largo, my NDL, the whole dive is gonna be 99 plus minutes. Well, the captain's gonna leave me on the reef if I'm not back on the boat in 60 minutes. So nitrox isn't gonna extend my dive time. I'm gonna have plenty of gas, plenty of no decompression time and get back to the boat 
in good time so that I don't upset the captain. Makes sense, right? So in that scenario, I'd probably just die there if those were the only dives I was doing that day. That's about it for situations when I would dive air over nitrox. Let me tell you some reasons why I would never dive air. Number one, as a cost saving measure. So if it's a price thing, if it's a difference in budget, I'm not gonna allow money to affect safety. So if nitrox is the right gas for the first three reasons that I gave you guys, I'm not gonna not dive nitrox to save a couple of bucks. And normally down here, like an air fill is eight bucks and nitrox is 10. With, like really for two dollars if i can't afford that then i'll just not do the dive and i know diving is expensive and people want to save money where they can but i'm not a fan of cutting corners on safety to save a couple of bucks it doesn't make sense to me so i'm not going to use it as a cost saving measure if it's the right gas then so be it but i'm nearly always going to prefer nitrox for that reason I'm also never going to use air for deep diving. Now, deep is a relative term, but what I'm talking about is technical diving or dives beyond the recreational limit. As you have learnt or will learn in your nitrox course, the more oxygen or the richer a gas mix is, the shallower you have to stay. So if air has less oxygen than nitrox, that means you can go deeper on it, right? No. That's where narcosis starts to be a real problem, and that's when we start to add helium to our mix. Now, there is a deep diving technical course that allows you to use air. For TDI, it's called extended range. It's called a bunch of different stuff with different agencies. I am an extended range instructor. I choose not to teach extended range. I think deep air diving in the age of trimix is unnecessarily unsafe. I'm always gonna want that squirt of helium in the mix for two reasons. Number one, it's gonna help me avoid making a narcosis fueled mistake at depth. And number two, I just find that after the dive, I can remember everything. I'm clear headed, I remember how the dive went. The last time I did a deep dive on air, I didn't really remember any details of the ship that we were diving, the wreck. It, it just, it was all fuzzy and I was trying to think about the dive I literally just did and it didn't come back to me clearly. So that is obviously a clear sign of narcosis and we wanna make sure we're managing that. And the way we do that is by adding helium and that moves into Trimix and that is a whole separate video. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate this community. We just passed 35,000 subscribers and I can't say thank you enough. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.